just curious, what, when you when you're teaching a course, um, you know, what what sort of things do you like to do, or or how do you how do you like to set up the environment, or how do you like to deal with interaction with the students? And you know, an example is like you know, do you have like a policy with using laptops or cell phones, or do you let people do what they want, or you know, what, what's the sort of environment you want to create, and how are you, how do you want to ideally interact with the students uh, that you're working with? Right. So, I mean, that's always a tough question. You, you mentioned specifically the laptop one, and that's one that I have, I've gone back and forth on, not because I'm, not because I'm giving in in certain situations, but largely because I don't know what the right answer is yet to to that issue. I think that there's a lot of things to take into consideration. You know, first and foremost, you're in a room full of adults who are paying to be there, and I think that one of the most important things to to a good sort of collegial environment is that you walk in expecting them to behave like adults. You know, we're all, I look at a classroom as a room full of equals, myself among them, and my role in that classroom is just, you know, a little bit different than the other students, but you know, we're all fundamentally kind of in this together and we're all, I go, I start from the assumption that we're all working together to make this a great classroom environment. So with that in mind, you know, then the laptop issue becomes maybe a little bit more leaning on the side of, oh, you know, you could have your laptops open, use of responsibility, et cetera, et cetera. But I also have a very long history in how the brain works and how distraction works and, and all of these perceptual things. And I know that despite how we may see ourselves, we are not multitaskers. We are not capable of multitasking. The best we can do is sort of get a snapshot flipping back and forth between the things that we're trying to attend to, you know, back and forth between the, those, those things. So I know that any kind of distraction along those lines is going to provide an opportunity for people to get pulled into it, whether they like it or not. They may have the best of intentions. They may be great students, but it is a temptation that is is often beyond their conscious control. So, you know, and then that tends to flip me back to, all right, well, maybe we shouldn't have laptops. So these days I tend to be laptops closed, and I explain my reasoning. You know, it's not, ah, laptops closed, uh, you guys won't pay attention. I just tell them, look, I, I would be caught getting distracted by this as well because we're all humans, and here's a little bit of how the brain works and why this is an issue. And typically that, that works well, and sometimes there's a little bit of discussion and people are interested in it. And it, and it seems to be fine. But yeah, in general, I mean, like I say, it's, it's, a, it's a collegial environment that I'm trying to set up. I, I love teaching, and I want to have fun when I'm teaching, and I love, you know, above teaching, I love people. So, you know, I want to have a really friendly, fun environment where people feel comfortable contributing to, to that environment. So I try to, I try to have fun with my teaching so that students can see that I'm having fun and then, you know, Hopefully that breaks down some barriers so that people can start to to contribute a little bit more. But I'll proactively pull people in as well. Um, not the sort of like you answer this question. I mean that's that's terrifying, and I find that that often tends to put up walls, and then people start to resent those experiences. And whether or not on the surface it might be a good idea, I think that it tends to break down a little bit more the the, the trust in in the classroom environment. You know we're we're a family, and we've we all kind of come from different places and we all have different experiences that have brought us to this this moment and will affect our interpretation of any given moment but i think that you know certainly my responsibility as the teacher in that environment to do my best to contribute to a space that people feel safe and and welcome in so you know i'll pull people in 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 sort of small doses uh, sort of like you know, I do a lot of in-class activities and whatnot, so if students are working in small groups, then I will make sure to visit every single group, and while I'm there, I'll, I'll chit-chat with students a little bit. I'll figure out what they like. I'll, you know, and then when I come back and I see those groups later, I'll try to my best. <laughs> it's difficult, and I'm getting old, but I'll try my best to remember these things and, and get to know these students as, as people, and as people get a little bit more comfortable, you know, I'll look for opportunities then to maybe pull students into broader classrooms, uh, classroom discussions. So for example, if I've had a group working on a particular problem, uh, you know, thinking back to when I was teaching core computer science stuff, you know, maybe they're working on, I don't know, a linked list or something, and I would go visit that group, and one of them asks a fantastic question. Well, I remember from my university days, I was an incredibly shy person. I was terrified to put up my hand in, in front of a group of people, you know, which were often, you know, 80 guys that I didn't necessarily know that well. It was it was scary stuff, and I had a lot of sort of 
the stereotypical strict teachers that didn't really do much to, to build my confidence. So, you know, if I've had, if I know somebody's asked a really great question, then I might use that opportunity when we all come back as a whole to say, well, you know, so-and-so actually had this awesome question, and I save them the trouble of asking it out loud, but they get the sort of positive reinforcement. And I try to kind of work that stuff in. It's certainly not a perfect system. Uh, it's just sort of what I've kind of come to... Uh, just sort of the general kind of process that I've landed on over the over the years. I also do a lot of open office hours where students come in, and I I try to provide opportunities, you know, a breadth of opportunities for students to to connect with me and feel feel comfortable within those opportunities. Some never will be comfortable talking in front of an entire classroom, and and that's fine. Everybody's everybody's different. Some people are more introverted than others, and you know, some people have histories that make it very difficult for them to to talk in groups, but you know, my door's always open, so hopefully they can at least cross the barrier of coming to, to talk to me.